you mentioned obviously your blog is called but I also had a day job. I want to talk to you a bit about day jobs because this has obviously my sabbatical. This has been a huge thing, I, I think, talk for me, myself, and also mm-hmm. I think for most writers in that obviously you have to work, you obviously you have, day jobs are unavoidable. And I feel like we collectively, I think most writers tend to have day jobs that maybe suck. Maybe, maybe I, I feel like they have day jobs that either interfere with their lives, they interfere with their, their creative work, or it, it, it's they're they're trying to survive somehow by doing one. So I want to go into a bit more about day jobs. Specifically, though, I wanted to start off by asking you, what was the most bizarre day job you ever worked? Like the most like craziest one? The most. Um, that's pretty easy. So about four years ago, um, I got a job as a technical writer, database manager for a okay. small electronics reseller um, here in New Hampshire. And it was a small startup company. It was 12 employees or whatever it was, you know, I worked in a warehouse, um, you know, writing these um, descriptions of things that the company was selling on Amazon Newegg and so on. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of database management type stuff. Okay. Um, and it was a small startup and um, it was, in a lot of ways, it was a nice job. It wasn't that busy. I had my own office, people weren't bothering me. So I could take it easy or often, you know, work on my writing at work, you know, steal away an hour here or there. Um, And I did this for a while. And for a while, it was going pretty well. um, Until it became known that the company was basically doing some illegal things um, on the tax scale, um, and in cheating some employees out of overtime, a lot of power harassment was going on there, breaking of state and federal laws. and this was a pretty rough conundrum for me because mm-hmm. I was not personally being affected by these things. You know, it's, okay. I had, I was off in my own little world, you know, yeah. our own little niche, you know, um, this was, um, you know, this was something where, you know, I had carved out a little place for myself. Um, but I didn't like the idea of living in this place or working in this place where people were being exploited. I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't like that. Um, and I basically chose to, you know, compromise this position that I was in because it wasn't right. You know, I didn't like seeing yeah. my coworkers being treated this way. Um, I had also gotten, you know, some friends of mine jobs at the same company. They were looking for people. Um, the friends of mine were being exploited, you know, and it's, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't like seeing that, you know. Um, yeah. So it became a big thing. We brought some things to the attention of the boss. You know, some of them were fixed. Some of them weren't. There were a few confrontations. Yeah. Um and I ended up, I ended up leaving. My friends ended up leaving. Um, and uh, I, I wrote about the experience um, on the blog. But the thing that it taught me the most was yeah. that it taught me a lot about what I value, you know, and this idea yeah. that if I'm going to have a job or have, you know, work that is doing something bad for society, is causing bad things to happen, if I'm supporting a manager who is exploiting other employees that makes me complicit in that and i didn't like that that didn't make me that didn't make me comfortable so i realized that whatever job whatever day job i had however i earned my money it had to be something where i could go home with a clear moral conscience at the end of the day maybe this is an extreme example because you know most people aren't involved with companies who do illegal things i mean i mean or there are plenty of companies who do you know immoral or dishonest things or you know it's you're working for the coal companies or you know oil plants or something like that um, or other businesses that exploit people Um, but to be faced with that kind of challenge directly the way I was it made me realize okay whatever I do I have to be on the same page with it morally I had that Lots. Okay. So extreme. So it's so extreme, extreme answer. No. Um, but it, in, in terms of bizarre jobs, um, you know, I worked as an online test grader for a while, um, which okay. was basically me at home, you know, on the clock. And uh, I had to read these um, essays for the SAT or other standardized exams that yeah. um, students had handwritten. And okay. they needed a human to, you know, read them and then grade them according to this ranking scale. Yeah. And um, it was a very monotonous job. You know, the topic was the same for weeks at a time, you know, and you would see, you know, so many of these essays. Um, And there was more or less a quota of 20 essays per hour is what it was. So one essay every five minutes, basically, is is what it was. Um, And so once I got good, once I figured this out, I could do an essay every one or two minutes, right? Yeah. 
So, you know, you, um, you do a couple essays and then you take a break and you work on something else, you do a couple more essays, you take right. a break and work on something else. Um, so it was very good for working on things like email. Um, okay. What I used to do is when I was um, looking for uh, small presses and agents to query, I would be at this job, you know, have the test grading window open. And then the other window would be, you know, looking for agents, you know, so I was able to harness my day oh, job time okay. and still yeah. meet my expectations of the 20 essays per hour. So like to speak. Um, and this, again, this worked well for a pretty long time. I could be pretty efficient at work mm -hmm. doing this. Um, but I just got burned out doing it. You know, you can only read the yeah. same essay so so many times. A lot of eye strain, mm -hmm. and then um, a lot of issues with multitasking. Sort of having these multiple windows open. Yeah, I would feel kind of brain fried at the end of the day. So I realized too. You know, I didn't want to have a job where I was didn't want to have a day job where I was just all over the place and very scatterbrained as a result mm -hmm. of doing that kind of work. Absolutely, and, and that's. So you've hit upon like three or four different, I guess, like connecting ideas that I think define what a day job should be in that. Obviously, you mentioned you mentioned the, the work not being too strenuous, ha have your free time, you're able to build your writing around it, potentially being monotonous. I, I think, and, and you feel free to offer a counterpoint, but I think the idea behind a day job is that it comes secondary to your creative work, right? Like, it's yes. it's like it's like the, the, the that little puzzle thing when you're like they give you basically like the, like when you're in high school whatever where they give you like the rocks and the sand little rocks and you have to put the big rocks in first mm. and then like the idea being that you have to have like your foundational things in first and then yes. you sort of like fill it up same thing you're right like the right needs to be the primary thing like your writing comes yes. first then you get a day job around it uh, you know so if if you like to write in the mornings get a day get a job in the evening time instead. That's maybe not too monotonous, basically, but but not too mentally taxing. Something that can something that you can go in basically with a little, a little bit less energy, but you can go in and kind of do your own thing in the quiet while you really think about what you're going to write the next day or, or that evening. Yes. Maybe have a chance to read. Like getting a job that has a, a certain beyond the financial, like the benefits are very very subliminal benefits, right? They're very you know sort of more free time, less less mentally taxing. Think, things that aren't like are going to be on the job description, but things that you can kind of ascertain later on. And so I guess for you, is there, is there like an ideal day job in the sense of for a writer, is there like an ideal what, like category of things that should be checked hmm. off to meet that? So, yeah, I, I think that any job that allows me the freedom and mental energy to write Okay. is in that sense the perfect day job it's something that doesn't interfere and allows that sort of time and mental space and i think there's a lot of ways you can get that i think a day job that is relatively few hours per week but maybe has a higher hourly rate is uh, has tremendous potential in that in that respect right now i work as an editor so i do developmental editing i do copy editing i do zoom calls writing coaching uh, with clients, and I'm able to work relatively few hours a week doing that at a pretty high hourly rate. Okay. So it's also, you know, completely self-guided. So I can work on it on that work in the uh, afternoons and evenings, save yeah. my mornings free for writing. So I have okay. that. I've had other jobs where, you know, they were just part time, you know, X hours per week, and that mm -hmm. provided extra time for writing also, or jobs that were very flexible, or like I said, with the electronics job, jobs where I could steal a bit of time uh, on the clock to write. Right. And I think that can be very, very helpful as well. So there's more than one way to find this. There's, yeah. um, and I think everybody should look at the opportunities that are available to them, the resources that are available to them, um, the jobs that they could maybe get or have the potential to get where they would be able to get this time somehow mm -hmm. is very, very important. I, yes. And I think you were hitting at, or you were kind of talking around the idea of working as little at the day job as you can, right? Like getting, the idea of a day job basically is that you do it as minimal as possible. So ideally, like we talked about, you were mentioning, obviously low hours, high hourly rate, part-time, getting a job that's maybe not necessarily full-time. Like for a writer, not, having to rely upon a full-time job would be the ideal yes uh, and I, I the reason why i'm kind of bringing this up is because there's no day job that's ever going to 
outdo your lifestyle. This is kind of, yes. kind of the point I'm trying to segue to. I, yes. I talked before about my, my channel about this before, but the number one thing that everybody needs to have is the ability to save money because it's like it's like spending money, right? So, so if I'm if I'm if I'm trying to build up my savings, right? Like, like if I make a hundred thousand dollars a year, but I blow a hundred in five thousand dollars a year, basically on cars, <laughs> you know, cars, boats, women, drugs, whatever it is. What's going to happen is at the end of the year, I'm going to be five thousand dollars poor, even though I'm making all this money. I'm not saving yes. any, basically. I'm losing, so I I don't actually make any. You don't you don't actually make yes. any money. Same thing with being a writer, right? Like it's it, it's like you can work all these day jobs you want. If you're not saving the income and not, not able basically to build up something off of it, you're always going to be a slave basically to the system of needing to work 40 hours a week. As opposed to, if possible, getting rid of your overhead, right? Like cutting back your overhead, scaling back things in your life where you don't have to work the you know 40 week, where you can work 25 hours a week instead and take 15 hours a week and be working in writing instead because writing like anything else it, it, it's a matter of time right like the the skill of writing takes time to develop it's not just it's not just you sitting every single day basically typing away the person that can write and focus on the writing for three hours a day versus the person that can do it for one hour a day yeah the three hour a day person is, is going to make more progress you're going to get more done you're probably going to learn more take more away but you can't do that if those hours are all going to be spent at the actual job where you're working so you have to you have to find a way to to be able to survive off less income and get a job that pays that get a job basically that pays the same amount of income to live off of yes. but for less hours to do it um, I, I i think i think the the sort of um standard that a lot of people run into is that they have not non-creative people is yeah. that they have a career that they want and they get a job in that career and then that career pays a certain salary and then based on that salary they develop a lifestyle they live in a yeah. certain kind of house. They drive a certain kind of car. Yes. They maybe go out to eat a certain amount. They buy a certain amount of furniture because they know that every week, every month, every year, they're going to be bringing home that same salary. So they build their lifestyle around the salary. I think writers and creative people should be doing the opposite of that. Okay. Figure out how much you need to live comfortably mm -hmm. in a way that supports your writing. Okay. So, okay, you figure out, okay, I can live for... $50,000 a year, $40,000 a year, $30,000 a year, 20,000. You know, it's like you figure out, figure out how much you can live on, get a job that pays that much and gives you as much time as possible. Yeah. If it pays more, great. That money goes in the bank and you use it for a potential hiatus or a rainy day fund or, you know, for nice things for yourself or, or whatever. But yeah. so in sabbatical, sabbatical, yes. Yeah. Um, or for the time when you you know, either need to transition to a new job or to, you know, yeah, take the time off. But um, but the but you basically do the reverse of what a regular salaried employee does is this you you build your you build your life around the pursuit of the writing outside yeah. of the day job, outside of the of the of the salary earning. And I think spending too much can cause you to take a job or work more to sort of feed those habits you know if you have a vice you're like like oh i have to get a new car every five years or something like that or like oh i have to you know replace this you know furniture with something that looks nice and will impress my friends you know bingo i think it's um if you if you see the writing as important enough to make sacrifices for above those kinds of material things mm -hmm. i think you're going to be in a better position to really develop that craft and get where you want to go exactly and i think that that last part is, is important to emphasize which is for those that are looking to make a living as a writer right like there are people like you can i because i again, know people are going to be watching this they're going to be you know either either very happy working for it in their current job and they just want to maybe, maybe you know take five years to write a book and maybe get that book published maybe write another one this is for this is this is more advice for those that want to live as writers that want yes. that would like to every day wake up and just be really write if, if they could like yeah. take a magic wand tomorrow and you can just live you know and, and you'd be okay living on twenty five thousand thirty thousand dollars whatever it is basically a year but just writing right like just doing that, that could you do that like this that's this is more for that this is not so much for. Yes those that are like oh i got this excellent book i like to I like to write in the evening times because it helps me unwind at night and and maybe in five years maybe maybe it'll be able to be queried for an agent maybe it'll get published i don't know maybe i'll self-publish it 
this is more for the, I, I, I use the analogy all the time of the person that's trying to get into the NBA, not the person that's trying to pick up basketball. The person that does mm. that lean time to write and relax, that's awesome. Pick up basketball is great. Yeah. Like, th- th- there should be absolutely no shame in that. Like, again, it, it's, it's, it's always weird when it comes to writing. No, you, you, you make awesome. a really good point. And then there's all different kinds of writers, all different kinds of creative people with yeah. all different kinds of goals. And mm-hmm. I think a person has to know their goals and be honest with themselves about those goals. And if you don't want to make writing your career, no problem. You know, if you just want to, you know, write on the evenings and finish a book and see where it comes, see what comes of it. That's great. You know, if you just want to play with your writing and, um, and create things and have them be of value to you, but never show anybody, that's great too. You know, I think it's really important to be, to be honest with yourself about that. And especially thinking about how the other components of your life, you know, the income, um, the day job, um, you know, the family, the living situation aspects um, and how, where your values lie in, in that respect. And I think that in some ways, especially over the long term, however you gain your money, however you make a living, it should be something that you can at least stomach something that's not making yeah. you miserable or causing, you know, mental stress or somewhere, something like that. And ideally yes. it would be something that you gain some enjoyment from, you know, and I exactly. think that's something to balance as well, because if I'm working a job that stimulates me and that I enjoy, I'm just going to be happier at the end of the day or at the end of the week, which puts mm-hmm. me in a better condition to do my writing as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There, there, there should be no, like when we talk about day jobs, don't, like if there's a day job that you enjoy, go for that one. Like where yep. this, 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 this is more the worst case scenario where you need a job basically just pay the bills and quite frankly, nothing, nothing, there's nothing that you enjoy doing at all that's available to you. Then approach with that mentality. But absolutely, if there's a job basically that you love that 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 that's gonna be fulfilled, like go for that, man. Like yes. I, I've done both in my life, and I can tell you, like it's way better to have something that, that's more fulfilling to you. And maybe you need to change and maybe you need to try on, you know, a couple of different positions, see what works for you. I think that's something that doesn't get talked about enough. The idea you can maybe test the waters a little bit in a few different directions, see what works for you with your routine, especially over the long term. I think it's really hard to tell how something's going to work out after a week or a month, but things become a lot clearer after six months or a year. They really, they really, really do when you're trying to decide, you know, something over the medium to long term. Absolutely. And, and I think for writers too, I'll be honest, like they, they tend to be the most introverted people in a lot of ways. And the, just as myself as being a bit of an introvert myself, I can tell you, like, like I'm not always, like when I go to an environment, like my initial impression usually stays, right? I'm not usually the most interactive with people right off the bat. I can't, like it takes, it does take time to do that. And the other thing too is, not everything has to be as fulfilling, right? Like if you get a day job where maybe it's not fulfilling, right? But maybe at a scale out of, out of like, out of 10, right? Like 10's amazing, one's awful. You get jobs like a six or a seven, right? That's okay. Like accept yep. the idea that your job is, must, you, you don't necessarily need your job to bring you the fulfillment. Like your job doesn't yep. have to come from fulfillment. Your fulfillment can come from other areas of your life. Like yes. the, the you, you don't need your job to be that. Now, if you work for as we, that's going to be about a third of your life. So you do want it to be something good, but you don't necessarily need to drive that from there. Having your writing as your main thing gives you that level of your feeling can kind of come from, come from that sort of area as opposed to seeking it in your day job, which is probably going to bring, make, you, make you really miserable because even most of the nicest of day jobs, there are plenty of things, times, I'm sure, when like the day sucks, right? When the day runs long. This is true. This is true. It. So yeah. having, having writing being your thing to draw the passion from it is going to be important there. Um, so I, I think one good way to think about this is that if you want to make a career out of writing and, you know, take your writing to the next level and reach more people, I think it's really important to think over the long term. And I think it's really important to see how all these different elements, you know, social media, day jobs, marketing, you know, a plan fits in with the actual work itself. How do all of these different um, different elements sort of combine to yeah. make what I'll call a writing life for lack of a better for lack of a better word how can you kind of join all of these things together when you're making your long-term plan and I don't think you know a person has to have the answers right away I think you can figure that out little by little sort of go and you know take baby steps in some areas and kind of feel things out see what works for you yeah. and I think as you progress 
the way forward will become clearer in other areas. I really do think that.